Today is December 26, 2014, and we are here with Mary Ellen Doors, and she's going to tell us a little bit of history about her family, including her father. Good. And her uh, car roots. Yes. Um, I come from an automotive family, as uh, my dad uh, began selling uh, Chrysler cars in Oakland, California, when he was 21. He was born in 1900, so it was pretty... Uh, easy to figure out uh, how old he was at what year. Um, and he was a very successful salesman. He could, he could sell uh, ice boxes to es Eskimos, as I say. But um, he was very successful and uh, he impressed uh, Walter P. Chrysler when Chrysler visited that dealership in Oakland back in those days. And um, uh, instead of falling all over himself, oh, I'm so glad to meet you, Mr. Chrysler. Oh, I am so pleased and privileged to meet you, Mr. Chrysler. He said uh, to Mr. Chrysler, uh, who makes the brake linings for the new car? Because he was this is innovative and la dee mm -hmm. And so Chrysler could, took a piece of paper out of his pocket and he wrote it down. And later on, he said, who was that salesman? And um, they said, well, it was Larry Green. And he asked my dad to uh, take the train and go back to New York and to visit him in New York City. And he did, and he walked into Chrysler's office, and Chrysler said, well, have you ever been to New York before? My dad, no, no, never been there. So he says, now, I want you to go to the, um, um, the public library, I want you to go to Grant's tomb, I want you to go see Central Park, I want you to go to Grand Central Station, blah, 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 and then come and see me tomorrow. And he did, and he, he was really very impressed with him, and uh, he um, made sure that my dad was able to sell Chrysler's outside of his own district, um, the district manager for the area, and this is from Los Angeles, when he was, uh, uh, he transferred to Los Angeles, um, wouldn't allow him to sell outside his own district. And mm -hmm. so my dad um, called up Walter P. and said, I, I don't think this is fair, and Walter P. straightened it out. So I, it helped having friends in high places. Oh, yeah. And um, so later on, my dad became a dealer for Chrysler. Then when the Depression hit, the bottom fell out of everything, and uh, he thought about the small car industry, and he knew that there was a, a big calling for, for a small car. And uh, he saw the, uh, an Austin um, and, uh, and saw that it had uh, posh, beautiful leather seats and pleated and soft. And um, he says, that's quality like that. And he parlayed enough money to buy a car in Vancouver. And then he drove it to um, the length of the coast there, all the way down to LA. And, and not having any money, nobody had any money. Um, he said to um, a car dealer, a used car dealer there, if you let me put my car on your corner, I'll get a lot of crowd because it's so different and I will call the press and the press will come and get publicity. So it's okay. So he put it on the corner and he called up the papers and they sent photographers and it got on the Examiner, LA Times and all the papers and um, the people laughed at it and they said, look at that silly little Austin 7, that was what it was. Oh, that's so silly, I want one. And he began selling, and he arranged for a shipment of Austins. And um, he began selling Austin, British Austins. And um, then he also got the Fiat um, uh, dealership, and he sold Fiat's. He took me with him down to San Pedro, California, and he had a, a shipment of 1,100 Topolinos on the ship, and um, so I was able to watch them being unloaded and everything. Then, of course, comes the war in Europe, and that closed down all shipping. Nobody would put anything on the seas, as the U-boats would get them. 
And uh, so that all stopped. But immediately after the war, in 1946, he got on a, a boat and went to England and struck up the same deal. But he talked to Lord Austin, and Lord Austin wouldn't sell him a, a, an Austin for cheaper than what he thought that the price would be. And he said, I won't sell you this, give you this price on the car, unless you, you can't ship the car. Cunard will never ship it. Uh, for you, you, you can't make any money on it. And my dad told him, well, I'm going to get the price down to $25 a car. And uh, Austin laughed at him and says, if you can do that, I will give you your price, or the low price for the car. So he went to Cunard and he uh, argued his case with Cunard that th this was deadheading because the shipments were all coming from the United States. Britain didn't have anything, so then nothing went back. And they, they weren't producing anything. It, it was hard times after the war in Britain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were very happy to have $25 a car. And he made the deal. Went back to Austin, gave him the price. And my dad became the distributor for the United States for Austin, and then he picked up Renault, and then he picked up Peugeot, so he had all three, and um, so he was um, uh, busy with that until, hmm, must have been 48 and um, 49, and then um, he left the distributorship for the West Coast to my brother, and he, he went to Paris to be able to sell um, the, the, the uh, Four CV and later the Dauphine uh, to tourists because, and for hard currency. The French wanted the hard currency and they didn't know how to sell to Americans. Well, my dad knew how to sell to Americans. You say, what color do you want? And um, they say, what color? And he says, well, you, you go down the corner and you deposit this money I think it was about $1,100 or $1,000 or something for the car, and bring the receipt. And so, so they would deposit the money and bring the receipt. He'd give them the key to the car, and he says, walk through that door, and here's a map of how to get out of Paris. <laughs> now that's how you sell to Americans, and he knew that. And at that time, the French would say, well, it would take your money in about three months, we might have a car, it might be four months, they weren't sure. So he knew it had, for Americans, it had to be right now, and he was very successful. Uh, so after that, he never lived in the United States again, he always lived in Europe. And um, so, it, and, and then he made sure that I had a graduation present of a 4CV, uh, when I graduated in June of 1950, um, and I picked it up in New York City and drove it to uh, Detroit. There we have it. There we have the background of your car mm -hmm. and the story of your father. Mm -hmm. And your brother? My brother had the dealership for Renault and uh, Dauphine, really. He sold Dauphines. Um, from that time, 48 until about 69, maybe, 70. And then Renault, the major company in Paris, didn't, they saw such a good thing. My brother was selling cars like crazy. For one year, only one year, he outsold Volkswagen on the West Coast, and that was something. Yeah. And uh, he sponsored um, the, um, 1968 Winter Games. That's why I fixed the date. Um, and they gave them Renaults to drive up there. You know, he was one of the many. What your brother's name? Is John. <laughs> John Green. John Green. Okay. Wow. Uh, same as my dad. He was a junior. Mm. And um, and then Renault, um, well, they were greedy, and they tried to squeeze him out, and. Um, so and my, my brother called my dad and said, they want to squeeze me out, what am I going to do? He said, uh, 
you don't go back in the meeting, just go to the airport and get on a plane and come over here. And so we did, and then it pushed uh, the rental people to say, well, we'll give you any price, and they bought him out. And uh, the, the next, I mean, it was only months, and the bottom dropped out of the small car industry and they were left with. <laughs> so my brother came out smelling like a rose, <coughs> and um, so, and then later on after that, my brother uh, married a Swiss, and he became Swiss. So I had both my dad and my brother being in Europe uh, most of the time. So you're the only one on the, in, in no, this I'm country. On this side. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! Wow. Thank you for your history. You so, have I a mean, rich car all, history. Talk about automotive. Oh uh, yeah, it was automotive. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Is that what inspired you to go into interiors? A little bit of your car history. Past, no, or? I no? got the job. I mean, who am I to argue? Um, somebody offering me a job, and I hadn't even gotten out of school. It's amazing. So I, I was. I was glad to do that. You know. wow. It's a different different story today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful story. Thank you. Thank you for that history. Mm -hmm.